All right, so we've been through the hardware, we've been through the system inventory, kind of getting the hardware all connected to the system. Let's look at the final two tiles in the setup tab, which is mixer settings and the UI settings. You probably won't spend a whole lot of time in here, maybe just on your initial setup, but it's good to know what's going on in here. So we're gonna walk left to right across the screen, mixer settings. So LV1 really has three configurations that you can buy. You're all delivered with the 64 channel mode and you can kind of read through on the screen uh, what the difference is between them because they kind of scale. It's really only a couple hundred bucks between each option. So we elected to send you guys out with the 64 channel mode because it really gives you the greatest uh, capability of the console and the unit as it's sent out. So we'll leave that in 64 channel mode. The mixing engine performance, there's two options here, latency optimized and DSP optimized. Let's go ahead and leave it on DSP optimized. Um, that's going to keep your server from getting overburdened. And what it's looking at, the uh, latency optimized kind of keeps the system latency as low as it can go, which puts more burden on the extreme server. So to kind of give us the maximum bang for our buck, we're gonna keep it on DSP optimized. And as long as we're using low latency plugins, which we'll talk about later, we're really gonna be in a healthy spot. We shouldn't have to worry about processor utilization. Output latency alignment. Another kind of overall engine performance thing is the latency alignment. We can have it so the entire mix is aligned or we can align it by bus. And we'll talk about mixed buses forthcoming but really this is a good thing to know is um, this is gonna kind of group your plugins so that they're, uh, they're looking at the latency per output. So whether it's your house feed, your broadcast feed, your lobby feed, it's kind of grouping those because some might have a plugin that runs a lot longer or has a lot more latency than other and that doesn't make your whole console adhere to that longer latency for say your house mix, which you want to be as low as latent as possible. Move in the center, um, a couple different versions here, empty session, uh, previous session. We have ours set on previous session because in the auditorium that it's in, we want it to boot into kind of a default state for any uh, really non-technical people to come in and use a system. You might elect to use empty session and then you just have to go in and load your show file every time, which will come up in the next video. Um, but we have ours set in previous session. I would en encourage enable logging. If you have an issue, this will enable Waves to get in and look at the logs and identify kind of where maybe something went haywire. The UI settings, this is where you can choose your metering, whether pre or post, your delay units for maybe your delays or even your time slip and things like that, milliseconds or feet, etc. Peak and clip, and you can kind of play with these and see what you prefer. And the last thing I wanna draw attention to is user assignable keys. This is really kind of a nice feature, and we'll, we'll kind of look at how these interact with the hardware. We just got a couple set up here for a quick save of the session, flipping between virtual sound check and live mode, and then talk back. There is a tremendous amount of options available for these things. Sometimes maybe a little too much as you kind of get weighed down into some things, um, even deep into different levels of, of presets. Um, but there's a lot of options here. You can, again, play with these, but these are really nice shortcuts for when you're in the moment, you're in a live mode, whether you wanna maybe use an automation, you wanna go uh, next and previous through your scenes, or you wanna just have a shortcut for loading sessions, or you wanna clear solo, tap in the tempo. All those things are available right here that you can put on to, uh, onto the hardware, onto the screen really quickly. The way you can access those, let's just say you're on the mixer window here, You'd see them show up on the left-hand side. Here's the user eight keys, and they should look just like what we saw on the other one. The other thing to note, if you want an actual tactical button to actually interact with, on your FIT controller, you'll see this user button over in the upper right-hand corner. If you press it, this set of displays changes, and now it looks at 16 of these buttons. The first eight are mute groups, which lines up with the first eight on the screen, and the next eight are your uh, your user defined keys. You can see save session right here and then flip AB and talk. So these mirror what was here on our user uh, screen ahead of us, but it's just another way to get there to do it this way. And we can just toggle out of that if we need to. That's really the things that I would pay attention to in the UI settings and mixer settings. Again, there's likely some waves training videos and tutorials on how to get around those. If you want some 
Uh, if you want to get really kind of into the dirty on latching and all the metering and things, but uh, I think these are the things that are important for you to know day one.